In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to blur the backgrounds of your images in Lightroom so you can get that expensive lens look without the expensive lens. Okay, so we all know the, the classic portraiture look where the subject is in focus and the background is, is blurred out and you have that nice soft image, that, that soft bokeh in the background. And you may think that, well, in order to do that, you need to have an expensive or fast lens, something 1.8, 1.4 maximum aperture in order to do that. In order to do that with just the camera, that may be true. But there are ways you can accomplish that just in Lightroom. Now, I will say before we get into this video, I'm going to talk about how to do this in Lightroom. Photoshop does it better. And I would say that if, if you really want to make the image look perfect, spend some time learning Photoshop. But if I know a lot of you like to use Lightroom and stay in Lightroom, and you can get the job done in Lightroom. So we're going to go over some techniques to get that job done. So the Really the first thing you need to do before you even start making any changes to the image is do a little analysis of the image itself so you're blurring the right areas. The biggest mistake and the most obvious telltale sign that the photo has been edited digitally as opposed to done in camera is that areas of the image are blurred that shouldn't be blurred or areas aren't blurred that should be blurred. So the first thing I want to do is, is go through my, my process for kind of looking at an image and analyzing an image to figure out what you really need to blur and what you shouldn't blur. Okay, so let's take a look at a few of these photos in Photoshop before we jump into Lightroom. So here we are from uh, with a photo I took from a, a photo shoot and you can see we have, even though it was taken from some distance away, the background is blurred out and I took this at a 1.4 aperture. So what you have to keep in mind when the subject is touching the background. What I mean by that is you can see right here the background connects to the subject. So if if all we had in this frame was this, this section, it'd be really easy to figure out that this needs to be blurred and you just you just keep her sharp. But in this case we have a much wider scene where she's actually touching the ground and there's some of the ground and some of the background part is actually in focus. So we're, we're going from forward to back here, forward to back here, and, the, and as you get further away, obviously this area back here, and this area back here, the building back there, is all out of focus. And this area right here in the foreground is out of focus too. But this section right here, between where I'm drawing these lines, is in focus. So, and this is a rough drawing, but from here to here, the background area, the ground is actually in focus, even though that same background is the same ground is out of focus out here. This is really our depth of field. So from here to here is what this section right here is what's in focus. So we need to keep in mind when we're blurring out the background, obviously we know we want to mask her out. We want to make sure that she's sharp, and that's the easy part. But we also need this area of the background, or this area of the ground, in focus as well, because if we just mask her out and throw this all out of focus, blur this all, it'll just look like she's floating on top of a digitally altered image. It's not going to look right. So some areas of the background should be in focus, and you can see as we get back further, and let me switch back to the the other color. As we get go in this direction, it gradually becomes more and more out of focus. So we need to keep that in mind when we jump into Lightroom. Now let's look at another image that I took with a wide angle lens. Now this was wide angle, and I think it was, uh, I'm not sure what the aperture was, but you can see it's it's there's a lot of it in focus in the background because it's a wide aperture. And this is one time when you, you may even have the expensive lens that you want, but because it's a wide angle, you're not going to be able to throw the background out of focus. So let's do that same analysis. And in this case, you can see her feet are touching the ground, so there's not much foreground ahead of her to, to worry about, which makes it easier. 
But let's say right about here and forward is in focus. And then as we get behind her, behind this line, the image becomes more and more out of focus. And you can see that a little bit because obviously as we get further away there's still some some uh, blurring going on. Not I didn't get the entire scene in focus, but it's sharper than I want. These trees are very distracting, especially the leaves and stuff, and I want her to stand out more. So really what we're looking at is from here back, we want to start blurring, but we don't want to just have a hard line and make it all blurred. We need it to go a little gradually. That gradual transition from sharp to blurred is something that happens in camera and if we're going to do it digitally we got to make sure we do that in Lightroom as well. That is one of the har hardest parts or it's one of the parts that a lot of people just forget about. They just think okay I'm going to blur this out and not realize that it needs to transition smoothly or else it's just going to look fake. Alright so now I want to jump into Lightroom and actually start showing you some techniques for getting that background blur. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and we already know what we want to do with this image so we can get right to work. We know that we want from about here back to be blurred. So I'm going to grab a graduated filter. That's really the tool you want to use most of the time for this type of technique. And I'm going to double click effect to make sure everything's reset. And I'm going to pull down from the, from the top. Just hover over that to see where the effect is, and I'm going to take this, I'm going to hold the shift button so it stays level. So what you're dealing with with the, the um, graduated filter, this center line is where is the trans, this center line is the center of the transition. The bottom line, let's bring that bottom line up, is where the, where it goes from zero effect, and then you've got 50% effect at the center line and 100% effect by the time you get to this top line. So let's condense this a little bit. And I like that we have zero effect down by her feet. Move that up just a little bit. And I think this is where we want it. So now I'm going to take the clarity and go all the way negative 100. So let's see how much blur we got out of that one. You can see it a lot in the clouds and the, tr and the leaves up here. So we've just kind of softened everything. So all that sharpness is gone. Let's go up here. And we can reduce sharpness as well. Now let's look at the difference. Okay, and you can obviously see it in her face because, you know, that's, that's where we, we don't want it, but that's where there's a lot of detail. So we've gone to a sky and trees that are very distracting. You can see we've kind of blurred it all out. So. So the next thing I want to do is go over here into the brush. And not this brush, but within the dialog box of the graduated filter, you can see there is a brush tool. And what I want to do here is, once we click on it up here, you can make changes down here, and I want to erase. And I like maybe a 50%, or around 50% feather. Flow is fine at 100%, but I want to make sure I'm auto-masking. What the auto mask does is it makes sure that only the areas where that center dot is touching is what's being affected. So you can go up to the edges, over the edges with the larger circle and not worry about it. So let's increase the size a little bit. Or I'm sorry, let's leave the size the same. Let's start with the face here. And right off the bat we can see her face is back in focus. Let's go around the edges and do the edges. That's where you got to be careful. And one thing you can do here is turn on overlay, and that shows you what is being affected and what you're painting out. Now, when you get into the middle here, you can actually turn that auto mask off. Just be careful not to go crazy, and make sure you get all of that part in the middle because this dress has some detail, and what's going to happen is the auto mask is going to see it as is distinct objects like these flowers that may think are separate from the rest of the dress so when you're doing larger areas where you don't need to be as precise you can just turn off that auto mask 
Now we got to get back up into the, the face area. So what I'm going to do is hold down the, sh uh, the space bar and I'm going to zoom in. We're going to turn the auto mask back on. I'm going to go in here and it's doing the same thing. You can see it's doing the same thing as with the eyes that the auto mask is preventing me from getting that. So let's get all that. Let's get that. And doing the big parts with, with the auto mask turned off is going to help you a lot and just save the auto mask for the edges. Now this is a lot of work. This is detailed work. You're going to have to go in here and do this manually. There's really no easy way to do it in Lightroom with just a click of a button. This is, this is going to take a little bit of effort, a little bit of time if you want to make it look good. So just going to have to deal with that. So now we're back in here and I've zoomed in. If I can hold the space bar and like move it around to get to different areas while it's still zoomed in. I like to do this work zoomed in because you can get more detail done. You can more with, you know, more precisely. So let's go up here and really the, the part that you want to focus on and make sure you get right is the face because that's what everyone's looking at. So let's turn the auto mask back on and I'm going to increase that feather a little bit to maybe around 75. And that way I can use that feathered edge. I can leave the center of the brush kind of on the hair and use that feathered edge and the auto mask tool to help me do the work, do the hard work here. I think I want to shrink this and turn off auto mask again and get make sure I get those ears. Now I think I've gone too far here on the right. So what I'm going to do is switch over to A, which is two, just two different A and B are two different brushes. I'm going to come back in here and add more of the overlay to that. Now I can go back to the erase tool. Go back up here. Hair is extremely tricky, and if you want hair to be perfect, you're probably going to end up in Photoshop instead of Lightroom. But we can do a pretty good job here if we're careful. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. You don't need to sit here and watch me do this whole thing. Okay, so I think we have a pretty good result here so far. And just remember, we didn't, we don't have to really mask out much down here because this is all in focus anyway. So let's turn off the overlay and see what we've got. Here's the before and here's the after. Now if you zoom in, before and after. What you're looking for to make sure you got it right, especially with a bright dress like this, something bright in your subject, is like right over here. You can see the, the dress is starting to blur a little bit. So let's turn on the overlay again, and you can see there's some red there. So let's minimize this, or, or not minimize, but shrink this. Make sure we're still on erase, and get in there and erase that. And you're going to have to go, you know, turn off the overlay check the before, check the after, and make sure that none, nothing important is being blurred. Now with the hair, you can see some of the hair is getting blurred, but you really don't notice it all that much. We've got most of the hair sharp, and this hair down here, you can see there's some hair down here that's getting blurred out, but it just kind of blurs into the background. It's thin enough that you it kind of just disappears, so it's okay. What, what you're really looking for are edges of this dress which are going to be very obvious when they're, when they're blurred. And I think we've got a pretty good result. Let's back off. And of course, when we look at it full size, it looks pretty good. I like how that looks. Now this image, you could be done with it here. But if you want to push it a little further, maybe you want that background blurred a little more, there's some ways you can do it. Uh, the first way is pretty simple. Let's let's take a look. I can go in here. I can just go on this 
right click and hit duplicate. Now I've just added to the blur. I've doubled the blur. And you can duplicate that as much as you want until you get the result that you want. If you think this video is helpful so far, just take a second and hit that like button below. Thanks. Another way you can add to the blur in certain areas, let's say just th maybe these, these trees, we really just want to get a little more blur. Let's go into the brush tool. This is the main brush tool. And we can do the same thing with the sharpness and the clarity, zero, negative 100. And get a nice big brush. Now, here, we just covered the whole thing and then masked her out. In this case, I'm going to, I'm using the brush to add the blur so I can keep the auto mask on and just kind of add it like this. And let's see, my flow, let's keep the flow all the way at 100. So I'm adding more blur. Let's throw on the overlay to see. Now, when you're doing it, keep in mind, of course, see the auto mask is masking out those brand, those leaves up there, so that may not be the best. You can turn off the auto mask up there. There we go. Keep in mind, don't forget that we don't want this area down here to be uh, blurred out. So keep in mind, just because you're drawing freehand, the the, uh, the graduated filter tool does that for you. It makes sure it's a, a transition. But just keep in mind when you're drawing freehand, uh, drawing the blur on freehand, just don't go crazy with it. Now let's turn off the overlay and see what we've got. So we've got just a little bit more blur. We can turn that off and turn that on. And we've just added more background blur to the image. Now if we want to see what the original looked like, we're going to hit that backslash key. There's the original. And there's what we got now. And I think we did a great job softening that background. Now, the goal when you are blurring the background is not really to get that portrait look or get that expensive lens look. The reason that we like that look is because it takes away the distraction of the background. So you don't need to go crazy with this. The goal is to soften that background enough so that it's not distracting. And if we look at this image, we can see that the background up in this area, oh, zoomed in there. The background up in this area, the way the sky was, the branches are, it was just a little distracting. But if I, when I've added that blur, I didn't go crazy with it but it just softens everything. You can see it a lot in the sky there. It just softens everything to the point where it's not catching your eye. And that's the goal. You want to make sure the background's not catching the eye of the viewer so that they're focused on the subject. And that should be your goal when you're taking the photo and when you're editing the photo. So that's what you want to keep in mind when you're blurring the background in Lightroom. Do it subtly. You can uh, I like just to use the graduated filter, negative 100 on the sharpness and clarity, which isn't going to be a drastic change all that often, and just layer it on. Add another graduated filter if it's not enough. Add some brush. You know, add, use the brush tool to add on if it's not enough. But do it in, in pieces. Don't just dump it all on at once, and you're going to get a more subtle look. You're going to get a more realistic look. And also you have to be a little meticulous when you're uh, masking it out.